Hello everybody and welcome back to Tree of Tranquility. We are now on the very last day of our first year, it's the 28th day of winter and it is our New Year's festival. I've gone ahead and I've played quite a bit into the day because unlike most festivals, this actually takes place late at night. The event will automatically trigger at 10 p.m. And the interesting thing to note is if you're in bed before that time, it will actually sort of wake you up, so to speak, and put you right into the festival. So this is actually impossible to miss. Now, because we don't have a loved one to spend the day with, we're going to be flying solo. This is not a romantic event, sort of like the Starry Night Festival event. It's more of a family-orientated event where you would spend the evening with your husband or your wife and your children, but we're not at that point yet. So there's just going to be a short cutscene to end the year, and then we're going to wrap it up and begin springtime. So I figured that this episode would be a good opportunity to use that to segue into spring. So we're going to see the festival, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I updated on since last time I played, and then we'll start off in year two. You can see my money in the right hand corner there, I've actually been spending quite a bit and I'm quite broke. The thing that drained my money quite a bit was upgrading my tools to gold. I went ahead and I upgraded both my axe and my fishing rod and I still have two pieces of gold left to use on my sickle and my hoe, which I will do when I have more money, but the axe and the fishing rod were a little bit more of a priority for me. I've put these tools into my rucksack to prepare for tomorrow. That way we have everything that we need in order to clean up our field and to get it tilled and to water our seeds and do all of that stuff to prepare for more seeds in the springtime. I also went ahead and I spent a little bit of money on cooking utensils. You can see my counter is almost completely filled up. I do believe the only thing I'm missing is the aging pot. So I have a full kitchen, despite the fact that we haven't really done much cooking, but one of these days we will get there. There's no point in preparing my field right now because even if I were to clear everything off and get the soil tilled the way I wanted it, it would all be wiped completely clean come tomorrow morning because if you don't have anything planted on these tilled squares, it will all clear out and you have to retill it as we've seen with previous seasons. So that's kind of why I've just prepared myself. I guess I can probably let the animals in before it gets too late and before I forget. And then I'll head into town and we can see what's going on there. The cutscene is going to take place in Waffle Town, regardless of if you're there or not. Like I said, even if you're in bed, you'll be able to see this cutscene in Waffle Town. So if you don't want to wait around town until 10 p.m., then don't fear. Go ahead and take off and do whatever you want and you'll automatically be transported to this area. You can see that they've put out some really nice decorations, some lights and all that stuff to make it look a little bit festive. And at 9 p.m. we get a little bit of a dialogue box here. The year is almost over. If I'm not mistaken, if you have a family, you actually get to see this cutscene at home, but because we're alone, we get to kind of spend it with the villagers, which is kind of nice. I like the idea of the whole village sort of coming together to celebrate. But on the other hand, it's a bit of a letdown of a festival if you compare it to Animal Parade. Animal Parade had such a cool end of year festival where you could buy really, really unique pieces of clothing. So we end the day by looking at the sun come up. 
and we are now going to transition into spring and on top of seeing our daily earnings we're also going to see a spreadsheet for how we did for the entire year so I made just shy of $250,000 this year obviously mining was the biggest contributing factor I made a lot of money mining I also made a lot of money in foraging and I didn't do too badly with crops either and then animals and fishing lagged behind pretty severely but overall I would say at the very least I made an effort to take from each category and sort of vary up my activities and if we make it to the end of year two we'll be able to compare the two every single year it will compare your stats to kind of see if your gameplay has changed any or where it is that you've made money And because it's the first of the month, we also have a new villager in town. Let's go! Ha, ah, so here we are. We are now in year two. I can't believe it. And if we look on the calendar on the wall, you'll see that everything is the same. All of the festivals are the same. They're all on the same days. Nothing has changed. I'm really hoping now that the farm is a little bit more developed that we're going to be able to actually participate and see more of these festivals taking place. We also have more villagers moved in so we'll be able to see more with the flea markets. Or so I hope. We have a nice sunny day. So we'll go ahead and let the animals out. Let them graze. I'll start cleaning up my field, or I'll start getting rid of all the weeds with the sickle here. I'll get everything ready to plant, and then we'll take off to Ruth's, and we'll go buy what we're going to plant for the season. And along the way, we can go ahead and meet our new villager. We're going to be able to trigger meeting him at the blacksmith's. And luckily, the blacksmith actually is open on Sundays, so we don't have to wait to meet him. We can actually meet him right away. So I guess what I'll do is I'll just yeah. start from one end and go to yeah. the other. Yeah. I'll start at the bottom yeah. and work my way up to the top. There's a lot of stuff to plant in spring, so yeah. I'm going to try and make as much space as I yeah. can here so that I have room to plant everything that yeah. I want to plant. If I plant everything in vertical rows, I'm hoping yeah. that I'll have enough space to sort of plant everything. Yeah. I may have to do the yeah. crops and the flowers separately, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Oh, and my hoe leveled up. I can now plow a 3x3 three three square. Ooh, that'll be really helpful. Okay, cool. That makes it even easier. I'm not going to need all of this space. I'm probably not going to go completely over for her and do uh, this whole area, but I might just want to do it for now just to keep the weeds cleared out and just to give myself a good idea of how much space it is that I have just in case I do want to plant more stuff later. So there we go. I think that's about as crazy as I'm gonna get. The field looks pretty good. There's a couple spaces up here where I'd probably need to use some fertilizer. I might pick up a couple of bags and just scatter it on the field. I gotta shear my sheep too. And I guess I should also feed my silkworm before I get too carried away and forget. I'll do that first, and then we will head up to the Garmin Mines District. Got a good supply of eggs today, so that's nice. 
I'm thinking of either getting another silkworm or another chicken. Silkworms might be the better way to go. I know it takes a lot longer for them to create a cocoon, but you do get a really decent amount of profit off of it. And I know silkworms don't live for very long, so it's probably a good idea to sort of have a couple silkworms on the go just in case anything happens. Alrighty, so let's get moving on over to the mines. We'll stop in and meet our new villager. And then we'll go and pick up our seeds. I should also check all my trees. As you can see, they've actually come in quite nicely. I think they probably still have a little bit of growing to do. I don't think they're fully grown yet, but they should be uh, developed enough that I'll actually start getting fruit off of them. And I have been doing my best to keep this area nice and clear as well so that the trees could come in and grow. And they've actually all grown kind of at a steady rate, which is nice. surprised at how much stamina I've used though. So if we walk by the blacksmiths we can see here that this is our new villager. We certainly would have recognized him with his purple hair. Someone's staring at me. Well you stick out like a sore thumb buddy. Nice to meet you. I've heard all about you. Really? I'm Julius. Charmed. I used to live on this island, but I went to the city to study fashion. Are you interested in fashion? Well, for the sake of conversation and to be polite, let's say that we are interested. I think it's essential to dress with some flash and style. A gorgeous outfit can turn you into a work of art that brightens the day of everyone who sees you. Let's see. As of now, you're... I'm not as fabulous as you, I know. We are a work in progress. Well, that's a nice way to put it. Ciao! So yes, that is Julius. That is our last marriage candidate when we're playing as a female character. So I'm obviously going to have to spend a lot of time getting him caught up to the rest of the bachelors. You can see that Jin and Gil are still in the lead here, but I've been making good strides with the rest of the men. It's just going to be Chase and Julius that are going to lag a little bit behind. But as soon as you meet him, he will get added into your friendship list here and he works with Myra and he also has his own home as well so we'll have to go by his house and see where it is and if you start talking to the villagers by the way I haven't mentioned this yet but after you have talked to the harvest goddess after making Edge's rainbow, you can talk to different villagers to see which ones will give you a hint about the seedling of hope. And we'll do more with that a little bit later. I'm not too worried about that at the moment. So Ruth has a lot of goodies for us to buy. A couple of different flowers and a couple of different crops as well. Spring is a really, really bountiful season with lots and lots of stuff. So I think I'm just going to buy two of everything. Um, I'll start with crops and I'll worry about flowers later. I'll come back and do the flowers later. I don't think I'll have room for them. And they usually don't take a long time to grow anyway, so I'll get the crop started and then maybe grow the flowers a little bit later in the season. And I'll also pick up, let's say, three bags of fertilizer. And that should be more than enough to get us started. I'm not going to have the time or the energy to do much else today, so I'll just go back to the farm and get all this stuff ready. I find that that's usually the case on the first of the month. It's generally just a preparing sort of day. You get 
the field prepared and you get your crops planted and all that stuff. And any seeds I don't use, I can always put into my toolbox and plant them later. Now I've been planting my crops horizontally, but I'm wondering if I should maybe try and do them vertically. I'll try that and see if I like that better. I'll also put down a little bit of fertilizer here. I'm going to put fertilizer in these areas. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to end up using this space over here, but I'll go ahead and put some fertilizer down anyways. And I'll also put some down here on these two oddball spaces. So the two replenishing crops for the season are breadfruit and strawberries. So I think what I'll do is I'll put them in their own little area just to make sure that they're kind of grouped together. And then I'll put all the other crops in their own little area. So now I know that these four spaces are dedicated to crops that I have to keep rewatering and that they will grow throughout the season. And then I have all this space for my other crops. So I should probably actually start with the cabbage because I think that grows the slowest. So we'll do the cabbage here. And if I want to do two rows of another crop, I'll have to forfeit this one this one space. So, why don't we do potatoes? And then I'll just do one row of turnips for now. Just because turnips are the least profitable. They do grow the fastest, I do believe, but they are the least profitable, so I can throw those turnip seeds in my box and worry about them later. But at the very least, we've gotten the more profitable crops that take a longer period of time to grow down, and we can start to take care of those. And we still have a lot of space on the field, mind you. I could put a couple of things here. I'll probably save that for flowers. What I might do is I might actually just take one bag of each type of flower and put them each in one of the rows, and then that way I can kind of keep the flowers and the crops separate. And there's actually three rows there, which is perfect. And I think that that, would, that might actually not fit though, because there's only five here, and you can have six in a row. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, I'm just kind of mostly talking to myself and getting a bit carried away. But I think for the most part that, that will look pretty nice once it all comes in. And I'm pretty happy with that. It, it suits my OCD. Everything is kind of in place. And hopefully with these squares being tilled, I won't have to deal with weeds and stuff for the next little while. Either of which will be nice. So that's pretty much all I had for today's video. We managed to get a lot done though. away. Probably going to keep my sickle and my uh, watering can. Obviously I need my watering can, but I'll probably have to keep my eye out for weeds. And then I'll go ahead and put all my gifts back in my inventory, probably off screen. There's no festivals going on for the next little while. I don't think that the flower festival is until about the 10th day of spring. And so I have lots of time to play and sort of find a couple of more things to talk about and discuss with you guys for a future update. This is also going to be the very last video I'm going to put the bachelor poll into. And for those of you who haven't voted, that will be put into the description. If you click the link, it'll lead you to a 
poll that you can vote on for who it is you want me to marry and I've also included a poll for female marriage candidates as well for my alternate file. I will at some point be doing an update uh, video or a look into my male file to compare with my female file, similar to how I did when I played Animal Parade. And I'm also doing female heart events, so I figured I'd give you guys that choice as well. Currently for male marriage candidates, it's a very, very close race between Chase and Gil. So get your votes in if you want to sway the opposition a little bit. And I will probably be announcing the poll winner either in the next video or the video after that. And then that will be the set in stone bachelor that I go after and who I will marry hopefully in this year. Assuming I can keep getting gifts out and I can keep charming the uh, bachelors. I want to thank everybody so much for all your support throughout the first year of this project and I hope you have really enjoyed the Let's Play so far. I'm really excited to be into year two and going into it, of course, being a little bit more established than we were in year one. I think there's a lot of stuff we still have to cover and hopefully you guys will continue to support me. I always appreciate the support. It's been a lot of fun so far and hopefully you will stick with me. Thanks for watching and I hope that I will see you next time.